watching Up North at 4. It's Wednesday, March 11th. Grab yourself a cup of tea or coffee because it's tea time here in the Northwoods. Because North it's Wood. Wednesday what? <laughs> That's later, Dan. Oh, That's later. later. Okay, I'm sorry. Man, That's later. Yourself. News Watch 12's Dan Hagen is our coronavirus expert. I'd like to put that very loosely. I'm not a doctor. My dad mm -hmm. was a doctor. Um, but yes, I'm doing a series of stories on coronavirus. I'm doing a lot of research. Uh, so I wish I was here under better circumstances, but uh, it's a pretty pretty serious story. And so. your goal is to kind of separate the facts and the fiction, correct? That's right. Okay. One of my least favorite parts about media is the tendency to sensationalize to get more viewers. I'm very proud of working on Newswatch 12. We don't do that sort of thing. Uh, so we're trying to separate ourselves from our competitors and, and stick to the facts and give people what they need to know. Okay. So wh and why, do you, why did this interest you to have redo the research and take this as your beat right now? So this is really important. You know, a lot of people are talking about this. Just today, the NCAA announced they're having no fans for March Madness, which oh is my gosh. just one example of the drastic steps that people are taking around the United States and around the world for yeah. this spreading virus. So I'd really like to uh, just get as much accurate information out there. And yeah. I don't want people to panic, but I want people to prepare. And that's basically the message I I've been hearing. Th I think that's the best because we have we talked about this yesterday on Tea Time, how people are, yes, we should take this seriously, but people are overreacting. You know, we saw a fight happen in mm -hmm. a grocery store on video, mm -hmm. and, and the fight was over a 12 um, pack of toilet paper. That's right. You know, that's a little ridiculous. Yeah, and I think in some ways we're a bit isolated up this direction. Uh, talking to friends in bigger cities this morning out in LA, for example, this is this dominates 22 minutes of nightly news, right? Mm -hmm. So it's a big deal in the big cities. While we're still kind of getting our arms around parts of Wisconsin. So yeah. we're hearing things are canceled, right? Mm -hmm. uh, as we're trying to limit our interaction with people. How else are people reacting to this virus? Well, like I said, UW Stevens Point. So they are pretty close to us. They're closing their classes. Sorry, I, sh I misspoke. They're not closing their classes, but they're um, substituting only online classes mm -hmm. for the in-person. So you mentioned social distancing. That's one example. And then just people up here are encouraging elderly people. People who are over 60 have a really much higher chance of, of mm -hmm. mortality. So they are asking those people to be prepared in the eventuality, because it seems like we're sheltered up here in northern Wisconsin, yeah. but you never know. People say this virus is very unpredictable. It could be up here. So right. people should have their medications ready. People should have their personal care products and their food ready in the eventuality that this virus does so come we, up here. So we should be stocking up on things like toilet paper or hand sanitizer? Is that what you're saying? That's not quite what I'm saying. Okay. I'm saying, so think about this. 80% of people, of the people who have gotten coronavirus so far, have had very mild symptoms. Mm -hmm. So they are experiencing flu-like symptoms, severe cold-like symptoms. So what I'm saying is people should take preventative measures right now as if they were trying to avoid the flu. This means washing your hands. This means avoiding touching places where other people have touched. I heard that one of the biggest areas for germs are gas station pumps. Oh! So when you fill up your you gas, remember to just hand sanitize right afterwards. Usually there's a hand sanitizer right at the pump, so pretty right. easy to do that. So as you're doing your research on this, are you seeing that Wisconsin is pretty uniformed in how they're getting the messaging out? Is it compared to the federal government? There's been some mixed messages, correct? How yeah. are the Wisconsin officials doing at this messaging? So everyone is taking lessons from the CDC. Everyone is quoting the CDC, so if you search CDC coronavirus on Google, you will be able to pretty much regurgitate what these experts I'm talking about mm -hmm. are saying. It's so kind of uniform then. It is uniform and the responses are a little bit different. I'll preview my story today a little bit. Sure. I talked to a Marathon County public health expert and a Forest County public health expert. So these two experts, they're saying the same message, but they have to deal with the coronavirus in different ways because Marathon County has a lot of local partners that they're focusing with, hospitals in the area. Mm -hmm. Forest County doesn't have a single hospital in the county. Mm -hmm. So they are in constant communication with Oneida County, Vilas County, all the surrounding counties to make sure they have a coordinated effort when it comes to the coronavirus hitting northern Wisconsin. Now we only have a couple seconds left. What would you say is the biggest misconception of uh, preparing for the coronavirus or, or how to prepare? 
There's no reason to be overwhelmed. There is no reason to panic. If you just try to prevent the flu, mm -hmm. you will be successful in trying to prevent the coronavirus. So there's no additional steps needed. If you're elderly, I would recommend being prepared if it does come to Northern Wisconsin, though. Dan, thank you so much for joining thank you. us here on Tea Time today.